Hey guys, Cody Schwabe here, and uh, in this video, I'm basically just going to show you how I did a scrape painting that I call Rusty Anchor. Um, now, while I'm opening this canvas, I'm going to show you kind of or talk about some of the stuff you see around you. Um, you'll notice there's a bunch of house paint because that's normally what I use, Don Edwards, and uh, I have a little squeegee. I think it's maybe a foot wide, and that's what I'll be using to make this painting today. Um, one quick note is near the end of the painting, it'll look like I'm done. I'll give a thumbs up. Generally, I'll thumbs up the camera when I think that I'm done. But um, I actually changed a little bit off camera, so you won't see that, unfortunately. But let's, uh, so again, this is the squeegee that I use for scrape paintings. Um, I thought I had a bigger one, but I couldn't find it, so just kind of use what I had. Um, all right, so you'll notice that I have these little cups. These cups are... Easter cups um, that you would dunk your little eggs in and um, I had them lying around and I ended up using them for my painting and the problem with using the type of paint I do is it's super toxic and kind of sticky so once you use a tool it pretty much destroys it anyway uh, kind of moving on from that I basically started throwing the paint on right and you'll notice that I actually I'm kind of throwing it in different spots. Um, normally, if you're going to do one of these scrape paintings, what a lot of people do is they'll actually just put the same color solid, right, all the way down from one end to the other. Or they'll just pour a lot of that one color um, at the one end and then just scrape it all the way through. Um, I would recommend this if you're going for a look where you want smooth continuous lines and no no breakup in the the painting itself uh, then I would recommend you know doing that with the paint so just you know putting it on one end or or kind of doing it in a line that's going to so that when you scrape it, it actually follows that that line all the way through um, with this one I was just kind of just messing around a little bit uh, just to kind of see the effect because I actually it's been a while since I've done it, and usually what I'll do is I'll just put them in straight lines like I just described. Uh, but this one, I was just kind of actually experimenting, so you actually get to see it for your, you know yourself. Um, now note that wherever you place the paint is where it's going to scrape to, obviously. And what I mean by that is that if you don't put the paint all the way to the end of the painting, you're going to have these gaps. Um, so what I, you see that black kind of on the left, that big blob, well, I should have put that a little closer to the end because um, you'll kind of see what happens if you don't put it all the way to the end. There's a gap, and maybe you like the, the effect that it creates. I didn't like the effect, but I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. So here I'm just going to start, go ahead and I'm going to scrape it. Oh, and the colors that I chose um, were... OK Coral, Boat Anchor, Black and White. Now the Boat Anchor and the Coral, the orange, are actually leftover house paint that I had from painting our walls in the house. I actually posted it on Instagram. And so I had those left over and then the Black and White are the gloss enamel that I typically use. So you'll notice as I'm painting this that the gray and orange aren't as vibrant as the Black and White. All right, so this is the part I was talking about. You see how as I scrape the black, it creates kind of like this arc, like an isocline almost. And if you like the look, that's great. Um, that's what will create that effect is by doing that. Um, I didn't like the effect. So, you know, for me, I probably won't do it again um, unless, you know, I do it on accident or something and it comes out good then I'll leave it but like you see how it has kind of that almost that comet look to it because it doesn't reach the end personally I don't like that um so but it's up to you if you want to do that kind of you know effect um but just know if you don't put the paint all the way to the end that's that's what's going to happen um here I'm just trying to get the edges because the paint thinned out like it didn't go very far um and when I do paintings like this like poured paintings and stuff like that I kind of like the I like when the colors run over the edges because I like the painting to 
keep the natural look that it has when I can. Um, so if I have a painting that, say, bleeds over the edge, but I, I didn't use the colors to cover the edge, well, then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just paint the, the sides like a solid color, like a black or a white or um, just, you know, a solid color that matches the painting. Um, a lot of times I'll use black because it kind of gives it look a framed look. But um, anyway, so here I was just kind of doing that. Now, I wanted to give this painting kind of characteristic because I didn't like the fact that it just looked kind of blah. Um, but you'll see, so I scraped it here, right? Which is kind of cool, but at the same time, it, it didn't really do much for me. I was kind of disappointed with um, the look that it gave me. Um, but I still, I still liked that idea to scrape one, just a single stroke of, against it. Um, but I didn't like the way it came out. So um, I wanted to extend this line, like I said, all the way to the end. And I also did it with a black here. Um, so you'll see that, you know, I'm just kind of using the paint that I have to kind of make these lines carry through the painting. And which is ultimately what I was trying to achieve with this piece was to have these lines that carried all the way through. Um, and initially, like I said, I didn't get that. And I found that that actually bothers me for some reason. Now every painting is different and every person is different on how they'll approach these paintings. Um, but for me, I like it when the lines kind of carry through. So it's kind of a learning process with me. Like, like I said, I just kind of did this on a whim. Um, so I redid the lines. Um, I liked that solid orange. I was a big fan of that. Again, I'm taking just excess paint and running it along the sides to, to kind of complete the painting so that later on I don't have to do it. And because I like the natural look that it, that it gives it. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm actually almost done with this painting. So um, once I finish kind of going over the sides here, then we'll finish the painting. I notice that little white spot. I think I actually just leave it alone. Okay, so here I'm going over it again. Again, I'm trying to trying to get the color all the way through. Um, and you're not going to see me kind of fix it. All right. So just know that when I I did go back over it a couple times to kind of get the color to go all the way through because I, I didn't like where it was. And I'll actually explain that real, real quick. Um, so basically all I did, just so you know, because like I said, it's going to cut out, um, I did add some white to the ends and some black all the way to the end and then just go over it again. And then I went across it. I basically did that, that downstroke against the grain and that's how I finished it. So you'll see that thought I was done here uh, and I wasn't um, and then you'll see the finished product after this so it's it's about to cut out and then I'll explain real quick what I did like I said I just carried the colors through and did a downstroke again so you'll see it right about now so there it is so I carried those colors through and I went against it and I basically took the scraper and instead of just going straight down I actually followed the grain but in that same pattern, and that's uh, that's how it ended up. And I was actually pretty proud with the way that it ended the second time. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.